guys, I hope you're having a fantastic day. I wanted to show you guys this little guy. Um, oh, it's been maybe a month or so ago, I wanna say, maybe not that long ago. Someone brought up, um, they had a little cutting of a crassula. I think it was a Buddhist temple, but I'm not entirely positive. Um, but they had a very tiny little cutting of a crassula and we're talking about rooting it. And I thought, you know what, I'm just gonna show my guy and go ahead and do a video on this. We talked about it already, but since I have this guy and it's doing something similar, I'm going to go ahead and show you guys. And um, just cause it can be kind of scary if you get one of these little, little tiny, tiny guys and you've wanted the variety for a long time. Um, etc. Pardon the banging, my husband's working on a, a tool out in the shop trying to fix something. Um, my, my phone is, there we go. All right, so this is just a little, a little two inch pot so you can see how big this guy is as compared to my finger. He's pretty, pretty small. He's just about two and a half inches tall or so, but he has quite a few offsets as you can see. I'm just gonna get the lighting a little bit better. And this is a um, Crassula um, quadrangularis or um, pyramidalis. There's several several names for it, um, but it just forms these tiny little clusters. There's two different varieties of this particular type. Um, one is taller and um, does the offshoots after it shoots up. So I'm just gonna use this Buddhist temple here as an example. The other variety of this um, pyramidalis or whatever, um, there's, there's quite a few names that it can get called by, um, shoots up more like the Buddhist temple and then once it's a certain height, then it starts branching out from the top. Um, whereas this particular variety, um, well variety, they're, they're two clones, um, but the, the, this, this type of um, the species branches from the bottom and all the way up the top, but it sends a lot of offshoots off the bottom. So with this variety in particular, the offshoots break off really, really easily and can just be started. And I just wanted to show you guys this little guy. This is Gritty Mix, which I am going to put up a video um, hopefully today or tomorrow I will actually get that uploaded a video on the gritty mix and what to do because I when I'm rooting things I want to be able to water a lot and using um, pure pumice or something like a gritty mix is great because you can mist daily water every other day or so and not have to worry about watering but really encourage new root growth and when we have little cuttings like this see it just breaks off from the plant and we'll form little roots out of the base here. And it already is forming a couple, but they're pretty, pretty tiny. And so keeping it just in a really, really loose, even though it's not technically planted, it doesn't really need to be planted. It just needs to be in contact a little bit and get some water. This one I'm not gonna pull up, but it's rooting really nicely and it's still partially attached to the mother plant and is rooting really well. This tiny, tiny, I'm sorry, I'm gonna move the camera a little bit. Okay, there's my tweezers. There we go. Sorry about this, guys. This guy is forming some roots here. See the little white, little white roots? So that guy will be rooting up just fine. But I water this. Um, I water this pot, and I'm gonna have to use both hands to set these guys and get them back in their little nestled places. But I water this every time I think of it, literally, which is you know every few days I give it a soak, and it just dries out really, really fast. But it just encourages the new root growth. But no matter how small these tiny little plants are, you can just set them right on top of your mix and you don't wanna keep them too wet, but you do wanna have water fairly frequently just to encourage their um, the roots to start migrating towards some moisture. So using a really, really loose mix, even if eventually you transplant it back into something a little bit more, um, with a little bit more compost, etc., in it, having a really loose mix when you're starting um, the new offsets is really ideal, especially if you live in a really humid environment. Um, because it allows the roots to get plenty of air, but you can add a little bit more moisture and um, give them some encouragement. 
So let's see, what else can I tell you about these guys? Um, you can leave the offsets on, you can break them off obviously and root them. Ideally, it's, it's nice to leave the, the ones that are on the side on um, for as long as possible and let them root themselves. They have absolutely the best chance of survival but sometimes if especially if a plant got knocked over and this one has gotten knocked over oh good gracious me at least four or five times completely and so the fact that two of these broke off is pretty pretty um i'm pretty happy with that i thought it would be a lot more damage than it has from the tumbles that it took a cat dumped it off and then my husband dumped it off and then i dumped it off and so it was just i don't even know how it happened it's it's in a safe place but i was watering it and set it down for half a second and totally knocked it over and strewn everything everywhere. Um, these guys are winter growers. They're actually most of the winter growers that, that we usually term winter growers for succulents are actually fall and spring growers primarily, but um, we call them winter growers because they like less water in the summer and more in the cooler months. So basically, yeah, not so much summer and winter, but in the hottest months, less water in the cooler months. Um, more water in general and that's when they're growing um, the most actively. These guys, this particular variety of Crassula are really slow growing and so just have lots of patience. Don't panic if it takes them. I mean this guy has been rooting for... I, I would have to look back and see if I even made a note of when these broke off but at least a couple of months and you see they're they're not very far along root wise but um, the green they're, they're still nice and firm. There's there's nothing. They're still very happy. So there's no no need to worry about them at all. Um, if I if this little start was the only thing I had, I would still be very certain it was going to survive. So yeah. Um, this variety is um, was mostly seen in Australia a lot before it came here, and so it's a little bit slower. Um, coming over here so it's a little bit harder to find but um, this this particular variety is the oldest or they call it a clone because there's the two kind of sub categories in in this uh, pyramidalis under that name um, and this more compact it's a shorter smaller more compact and that that branches from the base is the older older variety and the the taller one is um, a more recent Oh, let's see. They like a lot of light, of course. This particular variety, if it gets too much light, will turn brown or sometimes pink or red. Um, and the other taller variety stays green no matter if it's getting too much light or not enough, really. It stays a lot more of a light pale green, kind of like the uh, Buddhist temple a little bit more. This guy does get some reddish tips, as you can see here, but um, he kind of stays this lighter um, lighter color green whereas these guys can change colors um, but the taller the taller subspecies or clone of this this variety um, stays more more green for sure um, in 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 its natural habitat which is in um, South Africa in um, the Western Cape province it it grows in um, quartz fields naturally and so that can give you just kind of an idea this this gritty mix with the quartz and the pumice and clay and stuff is great um, pumice is, is a good thing um, decomposed granite would be great uh, so you can just kind of have an idea of what kind of really loose soil it is used to and um, but that being said once the plants are fairly established you can plant them in more of a potting medium type soil you just need to adjust your care a little bit and be a little bit more um, careful this particular variety rarely flowers which actually is nice because when when these types of crassula flower all of these stacked um, crassulas they the flower comes out of the top and so it kind of ruins the aesthetic and it makes it offset a ton more branches but the top doesn't keep growing in its beautiful way it kind of turns into a cone and then expands into a flower so the fact that they bl um, bloom more rarely is actually kind of nice and because it's it's kind of um, I don't know we like the look of these guys that's kind of why we want them and so uh, the fact that that it doesn't bloom super often is more nice the taller version of this um, blooms more frequently from what I understand but I have never owned it um, but it definitely is supposed to bloom um, more frequently this the these 
the plants that have a main stem like this and then have offsets, this is called the terminal stem. And so when that turns into a flower, then yeah, the aesthetic so is kind of off, we'll say. And then the offshoots take over and continue to grow and kind of surpass the, um, the main shoot that was there before. So anyways, uh, the flowers are white and not, not very conspicuous as is normal with a lot of the Crassula varieties, although a lot of them have fantastic flowers. So the Crassula as a species is one of the really large, uh, truly large species and there is so much variation um, in the species, in flowers, in habitat, in care, etc. And so, uh, but but in general, crassulas, just in case people are wondering and have other varieties, in general, crassulas are considered winter growers, not summer growers. And so just keep that in mind. You guys um, may need a little bit more water over the winter time as they're growing a bit more actively. Um, I've seen a lot of people um, in groups and stuff recently um, as it's getting to be winter um, saying, so I just don't water any of my succulents for the rest of the year, right? Because they're dormant in the winter. And lots of people say, yep, that's right. Just don't water them. And I just cringe and go, wait, wait. It depends on what you have. You didn't even ask what kind of plants they have. Finding out they have succulents is not, is not, um, enough. And, um, a lot of the varieties that were so popular for a long time, as house plants and that really became more well known are um, summer growers as opposed to winter growers and so the kind of common advice if you were growing succulents indoors was yeah give them less water in the winter but um, as the varieties that are available to just normal people without going through crazy sources expands then lots more people are getting winter growers in their collections and thus the blanket advice that has been dished out for a long time isn't um, cutting it anymore and is kind of being harmful and people are getting frustrated because they are following to the T what they were told and their plants are dying because Turns out they had plants that wanted more moisture or less moisture as, other than the times that they were told. Um, so just remember when you're getting these plants that succulent advice in general, it only goes so far and that these guys are really specific. Succulents are a huge, huge category and there are plants in the succulent category. Like I've said before in other videos, sometimes I feel like I'm belaboring points, but there are succulents that grow in the high mountains in the Alps with lots of snow and lots of moisture. And there are succulents that grow in rainforests where it never dips below about 40 or 50. And they have a lot of moisture and they grow in shade. And then there are succulents from South Africa and other places that are in the driest, um, most deserty, um, hot and sunny conditions and so yeah so succulent advice as a general category is um, on its way out I definitely hope because it is um, there are definitely a few things in general that are good advice but as more and more varieties are becoming readily available and easy to find places um, yeah the, that kind of advice is becoming less and less accurate and less and less applicable as epiphytes and all kinds of other things are getting a lot more common. Um, epiphytes are succulents that tend to grow in trees. Um, some epiphytes grow between rocks and in crevices like that, but they tend to like a lot more moisture. They tend to have some different soil requirements and be fine with a lot more organic material like leaves and bark, etc. Um, and so treating them like a desert succulent is kind of a sure way to kill them. And so, yeah, just keep in mind that um, this is a huge, huge category. And when you're asking questions online, be sure and talk about what kind of succulents you're talking about rather than just them as a whole category. Even if you can just narrow it down to the species, you know, aloe or crassula or something, that can help, even if you're not entirely positive of what they are exactly. Um, and you don't need to be 100% sure on your um, IDs, but, um, it can be really helpful if you have a general idea of at least if it's a desert cactus, a tropical cactus, a subtropical cactus, you know, a um, more hardy cactus, etc., or succulent, etc.
Alrighty, I am going to be done for today for this little video. Um, I, If you have any questions, be sure and leave them below in the comments. I hope that helps someone. If you would like to join our Facebook group, um, please do so. It's just a private little Facebook group for people that are watching this channel and want to interact more than YouTube allows. Um, there will be a link in the description box below for that, so feel free to join. And um, I will talk to you guys soon, and happy growing!